do not buy the Poco X4 Pro. And yes, while the title of this video is quite clickbaity, yeah, deal with it. A lot of YouTubers do it. So I'm gonna tell you why you shouldn't buy the Poco X4 Pro and maybe just go for these alternatives that offer way better value. What's up mga kuya? Welcome back to the channel. So the main reason, actually a few reasons why I'm making this video. Number one is that I'm quite disappointed with the specs of the Poco X4 Pro, the spec leak. If you're a tech guy who's following Xiaomi or Poco, then you probably don't need to watch this video to know why I'm saying don't buy the Poco X4 Pro. Number two, instead of buying the Poco X4 Pro for a review, I'd much rather make this video than honestly kind of waste my money on the POCO X4 Pro. And yes, while I buy uh, phones for reviews and sell them after, yeah, just the specs alone on the POCO X4 Pro disappointed me. And number three is that I haven't posted or uploaded a smartphone related video in a while because of custom shit. At least I think it's their fault. If you didn't know, I should have received a review unit of the Xiaomi Mi 11T and then the Redmi Note 11 for the past months but I didn't receive them. Yeah, I'll tell you all about that later in this video. But basically, these are the specs of the Poco X4 Pro. Uh, and the one glaring thing that really disappoints me about the specs is the Snapdragon 695 that's in here. Yes, it has 5G. Um, the previous Poco X3 Pro didn't have 5G, so yeah, I guess you could call that an upgrade. And it only has UFS 2.2 storage compared to the UFS 3.1 on the Poco X3 Pro. So I'm just gonna pull up these two phones. So as you can see, Poco X4 Pro on the left and Poco X3 Pro. Uh, wait, did I say that right? Poco X4 Pro, Poco X3 Pro. So it still has the IP53 rating, so that's good. Um, I don't mind that it's not a higher IP certification since this is just a mid-range phone. So a significant upgrade of a Super AMOLED display as compared to the IPS LCD um, 120Hz AMOLED by the way on the POCO X4 Pro. Still 6.67 inches, uh, 1080p. So I'm gonna talk about the whole chip setting in a little bit and then the storage because those are the significant glaring things that I find wrong with the POCO X4 Pro. So it's also a significant upgrade in the camera department. So you have a 108 megapixel, uh, basically the same sensor that's in the Redmi Note 10 Pro, a 1 over 1.52 inch sensor as opposed to the 48 megapixel sensor, which is completely fine on the POCO X3 Pro. I think they can significantly improve the camera quality of the X3 Pro through a software update but uh, I haven't had a software update in a while in my POCO X3 Pro. So you still have I think the same sensor that's also in the POCO X3 Pro as in the POCO X4 Pro a 20 megapixel sensor with a 1 over 3.4 inch sensor. You still have dual stereo speakers, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, um, a Bluetooth 5.1, NFC IR blaster, Still USB Type-C 2.0. I think that's something that I can rant about in another video. I'm not sure. So still has a side mountain fingerprint scanner. Uh, a slightly smaller 5000 mAh battery as opposed to the 5160 mAh battery in the uh, POCO X3 Pro. A real significant upgrade in uh, charging. So you now have 67 watts of fast wired charging here in the POCO X4 Pro, which is advertised to get the 5000 mAh battery from 0 to 100 in just 40 minutes. And then the 33 watt fast charging in the POCO X3 Pro, uh, which you can get uh, in my testing in 1 hour and 10 minutes from 0 to 100 which is already pretty good in my books and then the rumored price of the POCO X4 Pro is about 350 euros so that's about a little over 15,000 Philippine pesos here in the Philippines and yeah while here in GSM Arena's uh, page uh, they say that they cannot guarantee that the information here is 100% correct. Like about 95% of the time, they're correct with the info, uh, even phones that haven't been released yet. And I'm guessing that's for the base version of the POCO X4 Pro, which has the 6 gig, 128 uh, gig option. And then, uh, as you all know, uh, here in the Philippines, the POCO X3 Pro, the MSRP, 
is under $300 or around $12,990. And that's for the base version 6GB, 128GB option also. So that's a really significant price bump at least in the base version of these phones. And moving on to the chip setting. So again, the um, X4 Pro that's coming has a 695, Snapdragon 695, as opposed to the really freaking awesome a snapdragon 860 on the x3 pro basically in terms of performance like gaming multitasking all those other shits the poco x3 pro will just shit on the poco x4 pro also ufs 3.1 storage here in the um, poco x3 pro as compared to the significantly slower ufs 2.2 storage here in the X4 Pro and while yeah you can make the argument for Super AMOLED on the POCO X4 Pro a 108 megapixel sensor and uh, 67 watts of fast charging I think that's the only real advantage that the uh, X4 Pro has over the X3 Pro because how I see the POCO X4 Pro it's basically like a Redmi Note 10 Pro that's just a bit faster with 5G like that's how I can describe the POCO X4 Pro realistically and for 350 euros for what the poco x4 pro is offering it's actually a good value honestly and while i'm not a big fan of benchmarks in smartphones uh the snapdragon 695 in the poco x4 pro like performs i would describe as miles worse compared to the snapdragon 860 in the poco x3 pro so the snapdragon 860 the poco x3 pro has a score of almost 600k in Antu 2 and then the snapdragon 695 has a score of 400k which is not a bad score in any way so that's like just a bit of an improvement from the performance of the snapdragon 732g in the redmi note 10 pro and for this price of about 50 euros for the poco x4 pro like i said it's a good value it's not a great value but for me it's kind of a hard sell for the poco x4 pro especially with these two phones out right now the poco f3 and then the poco x3 gt like both of these phones offer insane value as compared to the poco x4 pro and just comparing the poco x4 pro to the poco f3 the only real advantage that the um, poco x4 pro has over the poco f3 is that it has 500 more milliamps in terms of battery capacity so that's 5000 on the x3 pro x4 pro and then uh, 4 520 on the poco f3 and then the poco f3 doesn't have a headphone jack and no uh, micro SD card expansion but in terms of everything else the Poco F3 just runs away and moving on to the Poco X3 I feel like maybe the best value mid-range smartphone up right now is definitely the Poco X3 GT and in this case with comparing these two the only real advantage that the um, Poco X4 Pro has over the Poco X3 GT is that the X4 has AMOLED as opposed to just IPS LCD on the X3 GT. All of these phones, by the way, that I've mentioned so far, all have 120Hz display, so that's not really something you should be worried about. All of these have 5G except for the Poco X3 Pro. And yeah, it's really a hard sell for me to recommend the Poco X4 Pro considering these phones exist. I mean, of course, if your budget is 15,000 pesos or over that, then just go for the Poco F3 or Poco X3 GT um, for that price. But yeah, basically for the Poco X4 Pro, it's like a disappointment for me, um, as you can tell. Don't get me wrong though, uh, some people might think that I find the Poco X4 Pro bad. I don't find it to be a bad phone. I just feel like it doesn't make sense to buy this. Again, with these three phones in the market right now, the Poco X3 Pro, Poco F3, and Poco X3 GT. So moving na po tayo sa run ko sa custom. So, uh, last August, dapat may marireceive akong not sure kung anong specific unit dapat yung papadala sa akin ni Xiaomi. It was either a Mi 11T or Mi 11T Pro. Again, I'm not sure since I didn't receive it. I waited for it, forgot about it eventually. And then uh, recently, then kalantaka ako ni Xiaomi for a review unit on the Redmi Note 11. Uh, which I didn't receive. I was supposed to receive it last month and maybe just a few days after the launch of the Redmi Note 11 like the online launch event um, I received the call. I wasn't actually sure who called me but it was regarding a package from China 
um, I was assuming that those were the phones or that was the phone. So they mentioned that my package had the problem with customs. I'm not sure what it was. Um, I gave them my email. I didn't receive any email regarding that after that call. But I did receive this. So basically this is an echo bag. <laughs> um, yes, a Redmi Note 11 themed echo bag and then there's the echo bag echo bag i'm gonna try out to pronounce it and just to be clear i'm not blaming xiaomi for this i'm quite grateful uh, for them for still sending a small youtuber like me uh, phones to review but thankfully i did receive as you all know the redmi 10 that i reviewed a few months ago so sa customs ng pinas ano na ano na balita ewan ko wala akong alam wala akong balita mula sa kanila sa mga phones na dapat kong na-receive at nakakadagdag sa pagkawalang gana ko na so dapat may mara-review pa sana akong phone last year and then last month sana pero for some reason di ko nga sila na-receive kasi of course alam nyo naman ito yung hanap buhay ko ito na yung main job ko as a content creator and ayun that's all I'm gonna say for now uh, hopefully this video was uh, helpful to those who were planning on buying the Poco X4 Pro. If you're still gonna buy it, I respect that. It's your money. Um, but let me know why you're still gonna buy it in the comments of this video. And I think I didn't forget anything else regarding the Poco X4 Pro. So of course, uh, as always, leaving a like is the easiest way to support the channel. Uh, consider subscribing if you like my content and turn on notifications so you'll be updated on my latest videos. As always, stay safe mga kuya. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one peace be my angel cooking right up in the